All right, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Wednesday. It is the Earthmaster out here, about 10, 16 a.m. California time here, uh, October 2nd, 2024. Uh, live stream just went down here a few minutes ago, suspiciously, and uh, got it back up and running, so hopefully it stays up this time. Been having some uh, odd issues with it recently. Uh, a little bit of activity working its way up here across the northern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, this morning so far, a 4.1, just coming in uh, into the, uh, just shy of the Cascadia, which sits right here. This is in the little basin area of the Explorer Plate, or the northern end of the Juan de Fuca Plate here. So a little bit of activity stirring up there. Uh, let me check out Trimmer last night. We didn't get a chance to jump on here. So Trimmer is still somewhat elevated here, about 300 epicenters of Trimmer confined to the central Oregon coast area and that's where most of the trimmer activity has uh, been occurring. If we look here at the last week we got uh, almost 2,000 epicenters of trimmer and again centered right around the center portion here of the Oregon coastline. So this area uh, has not really seen a lot of trimmer activity here in the last couple months but it looks like it's playing catch up now starting to uh, adjust accordingly while the rest of the um, subduction zone out here has seen a, a broad amount of trimmer activity over the last couple months everywhere except for this region. So we're starting to fill in there uh, across that area of the Cascadia subduction zone. Some further movement up into the Pacific Northwest as well with, uh, let's see, some of these quakes from yesterday it looks like. So just about ready to drop off that 24 hour threshold. Uh, Northern California down here, fairly quiet. Um, the area around the San Joaquin Valley here where we had a four-pointer uh, yesterday. Uh, still see a little bit of aftershock activity here. Some more quakes this morning with a 2.7 and a little 0.7 in the area of yesterday's quake activity. So, um, you know, just an overall pattern here of some strain building up here across Southern California in the last couple months. We'll definitely continue to keep an eye on this as things are getting elevated still remaining elevated across the uh, greater los angeles area around the uh, fontana well this is actually uh okay so this is going to be associated with the puente hills thrust fault got a couple more earthquakes here on that area this is a region that's seen a 4.4 uh, 4 .4 earthquake here a couple weeks back made the news here uh, this fault system very capable of producing a 7.5. It goes underneath downtown Los Angeles and over here uh, towards the Beverly Hills area. Uh, some of the latest uh, research has shown that it's expanding over across this area. And of course, a 7.5 underneath this region would be uh, completely devastating. Los Angeles uh, would, um, it would not be good. So we got a little bit of activity here uh, yesterday and the most recent one today, a 1.5 around the Puente Hills Thrust Fault. Uh, some further activity here around the Fontana Earthquake Swarm region. Um, a source of a 3.5 yesterday. The majority of these quakes there from yesterday as well. Um, further down south, fairly quiet. Not really seeing anything major going on, but again, we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, Malibu area, a couple earthquakes this morning back up here into the mountain ranges, a 2.7 and a 2.2 there across the area of the Santa Monica Mountains. And of course, that's been another area of interest here with increasing earthquake events there over the last uh, several weeks. So we'll continue to watch this, folks, and see what today has in store. feel like we're getting a little bit closer there to seeing something larger take place. Uh, Texas area, the oil field's getting hit out there outside of, outside of Pecos, Texas. And... Um, Aside from that, the rest of the country looks pretty quiet out there. Uh, still dealing with the after effects of Helene there across uh, areas in the east. And a uh, big time recovery operation out there. Goodness, uh, devastating events. Uh, Kilauea Volcano, a couple smaller earthquakes up here across the summit area. Uh, mainly some twos out there today. Nothing major going on. Um, although a little bit of stretching going on here across the area of the Pahala region off towards the Loihi Seamount. Uh, nothing big, but it is noticeable there on the map. And uh, the majority of these quakes are fairly deep underneath this area. Uh, as far as uh, any large scale movement here overnight, well, yesterday 6.6 .6 standing out as the largest quake there 
uh, from yesterday. Goodness, we just had a lot of earthquake activity all over the place yesterday. Today so far, uh, that's going to be this 4.7 earthquake here across the Java Trench off the coast of Sumatra. Uh, now, not a big earthquake, but it is a, a recent earthquake here. And with all the movement we've seen yesterday all across this area, uh, it is expected to progress across the plate boundary here, the Java Trench. Uh, a lot of times that's where we'll see this, uh, the uh, strain uh, transfer following some large-scale events out here across the, uh, the plate boundaries. So keep an eye there on the Java Trench area. Um, Fiji area, 4.5, getting that deep earthquake activity once again. 335 miles deep for that uh, 4.5 that popped off there early this morning. Uh, earthquake 3D globe here showing uh, mostly uh, the same events there on the USGS map. I know EMSC is showing uh, a little bit of earthquake swarming going on in Western Australia. A little odd. Bunch of three stirring up out here across this area. Nothing big, but uh, I know they have uh, they can have some earthquake activity out here. A little bit larger than that, too, around the Darling Range area outside of Perth. Uh, aside from that, uh, South Atlantic Ocean got a 5.5 here yesterday. Uh, I don't believe we've got anything else stirring up there so far today. Well, a little bit north of uh, Iceland here, 3.1. Aside from that, I guess we'll see what happens here today. Let's check out space weather activity. Had a uh, the second largest flare of this solar cycle struck yesterday with a X 7.1 Earth directed. Now there is a little bit of uh, potential that it did produce a CME, a uh, not a not a full one, not a massive CME or directed, but it did produce a little one, and we could see. A little bit of aurora activity here in the days ahead. Uh, not a big deal. Um, it was a pretty large X flare, but it did not produce a massive CME. And that is, of course, from a uh, sunspot that is still currently facing the Earth here. Uh, 3842 is the source I'll show you guys here. This is from yesterday. Today's image uh, showing uh, still a little bit of complexity here. It is just about lined up here squarely uh, looking at the planet here a couple other regional sunspots that are amplifying as well so we do have a growing region here that is currently facing the earth uh, that harbors some potential there for some stronger flares we'll watch that pretty closely this whole region here looking uh, quite interesting also back on the northeastern limb we finally got a view of that massive sunspot that's been throwing off a lot of large explosions here while it was on the far side of the sun still looking fairly complex that is sunspot number 3848, and uh, that's one of the newer sunspots out here. A, a beta delta structure here, and it looks like, um, hard to tell if it's growing or if it's uh, just stationary, but either way, we've got to keep an eye on that region as well as these other sunspots as the flare threat is elevated out here. 35% chance for X flare, and that is due to the complexity of all of these sunspots out there. Uh, 75 for M flare, C flare around 99% chance or so. So we got, uh, yeah, some big time risk of some stronger flaring here in the days ahead. All right, severe weather outlook here today. Not a whole lot going on over the next couple days. I guess that's good news here. Um, only a little bit of thunderstorm activity down here across Florida. A look at the long range models here. We've been keeping a keep an eye here on some type of tropical system in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, looks like it's wanting to, uh, uh, hang out a little bit. I don't really see any major organization going on there. Hard to say. Looks like uh, maybe towards the uh, second week of October it wants to uh, form a little bit, but mainly track south there, uh, away from the Gulf Coast states, and that's uh, good news. We don't need any more uh, mess going on out there across the uh, Carolinas and whatnot. They've been dealing with a lot of unfortunate uh, events there lately from Helene. Uh, aside from that, folks, um, live stream is up and running. I, it just went down as I was uh, sitting here on the computer. And in fact, I lost all of my internet uh, this time. A lot of times it would just be um, here on this computer, but all my devices lost the uh, internet connection for some reason. I don't know why, but uh, yeah, a little, a little odd. Anyway, I caught it. Live stream is up and running. 
I hope everyone has a good day out there. I got a few things I got to do today, but I'll be off here on the side, kind of monitoring things. And uh, yeah, it's Wednesday, Friday, right around the corner. Keep an eye here on Southern Cal. We're getting a little bit of activity out here in the uh, uh, these regions of interest, including the Puente Hills Thrust Fault. There, that's uh, you know overall pattern here, folks. If you look at the overall pattern we've seen here, we've seen a major increase in earthquake activity here in the last couple months, and it's continuing. Not just in one area, but in various areas, and now working its way up north to, to the uh, area that we seen yesterday with the uh, Kalinga in the Avenal area, seeing some earthquake activity 4.0. Now, the San Andreas Fault here, the Parkfield seg segment, um, is just about due here for another six pointer. There's regular occurrence intervals here that take place roughly between, it's like 18 to 24 years, and the last one out here was. Um, 2004. Now, there's been a little chat here. If we get another six pointer on this at uh, the southern end here uh, of the park field segment, that could trigger the locked area which sits down south here. So, got to watch that and see how this plays out. Either way, earthquake activity has been elevated out here, and we'll continue to watch that. You guys have a good day. We'll be uh, out here kind of watching things. Stay safe out there, everyone. <clears throat>